Good day, Dr. Basil Nje. Thanks for talking to CRTV News. You are a Cameroonian-based doctor in the U.S. who is a, a specialist in gastroenterology and hepatology. Uh, you have close to uh, 17 distinctions to your uh, uh, profile online, and um, clearly you've had at least 13 years of, of experience in, in this uh, uh, domain of medicine. Um, tell me if someone was meeting you for the first time and asked, who is Dr. Basil J? What would you say? Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Fonka. Uh, thank you for getting me on your show. Uh, I'm really honored to be here and I'm, 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 I'm happy that you gave me the opportunity to share my experience. Uh, I think your question is, is, is very interesting because there is a lot about me and to put it uh, in summary in a couple of minutes, it's a little bit difficult. But I, I think I can start uh, from the beginning a little bit to tell you where I am. And so I'll probably take you back to, uh, uh, to my younger years, basically. Uh, so I uh, was born in the early 80s, actually, in, in Mamfi, uh, which is in the southwest region of Cameroon. Um, I grew up in the northwest region. I grew up in, in the, you know, in, in Bengui, in Batsiguan, as well as Bamenda. Mm-hmm. Uh, and actually went to, to, to high school like in, in St. Pete's College. And, and after graduation from high school and uh, coming up as, uh, I think, the top five in the country, in the advanced level, I got admission into the Faculty of Medicine and Biomedical Science, which is uh, from Mercuse, as a lot of people call it. Uh, after leaving uh, medical school and spending seven years in medical school, I had a scholarship, a British scholarship that took me to, to the UK. I got a master's in public health from the University of Edinburgh. And after my master's, I moved to the United States uh, for residency training. I trained for three years in internal medicine at the University of Connecticut. After residency training, I continued with fellowship training at the prestigious Yale University, where I obtained a specialization training in gastroenterology and hepatology. Now, I know that uh, gastroenterology, just to pronounce it is difficult, a lot of people can't do that. So that basically is a doctor who takes care of patients with uh, liver disease and disease of the digestive tract. So digestive tract includes the stomach, the intestines, uh, and the gallbladder as well. Uh, currently, I, I, I work uh, as, a, as, a, as a gastroenterology specialist in the US. Uh, I see patients with, with liver disease and, and gastro problems. Mm-hmm. Um, I also uh, am an adjunct assistant professor uh, of medicine, and, and I also teach and I do research. What does it mean for you? I've, I've looked at your profile. You have close to um, 17 distinctions or awards already, so you should be getting used to this by now. Um, but what is making this 2021 America Most Honored Doctors List special? You know, in the last 10 years or so, I've received many awards, many distinctions uh, in the United States in particular. Uh, But this award is very, very special and it's different for me. Uh, The the main reason is this is the first award I'm actually getting since I lost my dad, who died earlier this year. So this is really close to my heart and I'm dedicating this uh, award to him. Why do you think you earned this recognition then? There are, uh, I imagine, um, hundreds of doctors who leave uh, uh, schools across uh, the US and across the world um, daily or even yearly and who try to excel in their various fields. Um, what set you apart from the rest? You know, my brother always says that, <laughs> that I earned it, <laughs> you know. So I would say, I would first of all, say I earned it, you know. But on a more serious note, I, I, I think that this is accumulation of 20 years of hard work. Uh, this is a accumulation of 20 years of going to school almost every day of my life. Uh, doing research, seeing patients, and taking care of these patients. This is a recognition from my peers, all the colleagues and patients, uh, that indeed I am a good doctor. Okay, um, when you say good doctor, um, there is a series uh, on TV that is actually the good doctor. Um, What do you think makes you a good doctor? Is it your relationship with your patients? Is it how much you master uh, your field? Or is it the... um, innovations you're trying to bring in the way you handle uh, these uh, uh, diseases? Most important thing I believe is empathy. 
my ability to empathize with patients, my ability to feel like I'm sick. You know, after that, other things can come, and that would include training itself. I believe that I, I, I've been blessed enough to attend some of the best universities in the world, and, and that has provided me with the information I need and the training I need to practice safely. You know, but empathy to me, I think it's the key, and that, that's what makes you a good doctor. Is there any patient uh, you've been with and uh, whose recovery or not has affected you? Actually, I've, I've been with a lot of patients whose recovery has affected me, but there's one in particular I want to talk to you about. It takes me back to Cameroon, actually. So uh, before I left Cameroon, you know, during my CV of training, we have something called housemanship, where you go to, to, to like a little town, a little village, and you work. And I was in uh, Kumba, actually, then. And I had a patient who was HIV positive and, and was really sick uh, was, and was about, literally about to die at, at that point. The family had abandoned that patient. And I walked up to the patient's bed. I thought this patient was really going to die. But I said, let me give it my last try. I learned how to put an NG tube, a tube that you put through the nose into the stomach. I placed an NG tube in that patient. I actually made sure the patient's medications were crushed and I passed it through the NG tube. Mm -hmm. Two days later, I walked into that patient's room and the patient was not in the bed and I thought the patient had died. I had given, I, I knew the patient had died. And then I turned around and the patient looked at me and said, doctor, doctor. She was standing and looking at me straight mm -hmm. to my face. And I said, what, you are alive? A couple of years later, before I left Cameroon, I was in the, in the, in the taxi cab and I got a call and I picked it up and I said, hello. She said, I am this, this patient. You saved my life two years ago and I just wanted to tell you thank you. I've never forgotten that experience. Now tell me, how does a young Cameroonian boy like you rise to such, um, would say international prominence? I would say that I didn't do this on my own. You know, yes, I worked hard. Yes, I, 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 I did a lot of time, you know, in terms of studying, uh, showing up on time, you know, but the people will really help me and I cannot ignore them. And I, I must talk about them because I think that they laid the foundation, but I can't only talk about people who help me medically, but people who provide a support, social support. So I'm talking about my family, uh, my mom, my, my siblings, uh, close family members and, and close friends and colleagues. Uh, from medical school to residency and fellowship, and even now. But there's definitely a lot to your um, character and thirst for success that uh, probably uh, managed to help you overcome these difficulties. We know medical studies are long and tedious, and I can see uh, a PhD. I can see several different fields of interest. This has been years upon years of sacrifice and um, not getting discouraged. The good thing about hard work is that you, you get rewarded. You know, hard work never goes unpaid. It, you know, and I don't talk, I'm not talking about financial pay here. I'm talking about uh, uh, just somebody telling me thank you. You know, those are things that encouraged me along the line. And, and although I was putting in time, I was staying away from family and friends. Uh, at some at certain stages in life, I had to stop a little bit and reassess and then continue. And um, and I think that there were those little things, the tank use, the the, the smile you see in, in, in the patient's face when they they recover, uh, the, 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 just the, the, the shared joy you have when you do a procedure and somebody is, is, is treated, uh, that, that is what kept me going. Um, let's get into the slightly controversial part of our conversation. Um, lots of young Cameroonian doctors end up abroad. Um, don't you feel it's a brain drain that is even unfair to us as a developed country who are, I would say, most in need of your expertise? I think the problem, and I think the problem is not traveling abroad. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think the problem is traveling abroad and not coming back. Mm -hmm. That's where the problem is. A lot of big guys go and they don't come back. Mm -hmm. And they don't come back for reasons, right? They don't come back because they think that they're not going to be accepted when they come back home. They think that they're not going to have the same amount of, of support they have, you know, whatever they're doing. Uh, I agree that our healthcare system in, in Cameroon and in most African countries and other parts of the world, it's not only Africa, is broken. I mean, even the healthcare system here in America is broken. Ours is broken as well. And I, I agree there's a lot of work we have to do. And it's going to take citizens as well as the government 
sitting down and talking about this thing. It's going to take the government talking to people who have studied abroad, like us, who we are willing to come back, you know, and reaching an agreement, even if it means, you know, giving some kind of encouragement or even a simple recognition mm -hmm. that there's somebody doing something like this. That is what we really need. And I know a lot of guys who are doing really well, a lot of doctors who are, who are ready to abandon their high paying jobs and come back home. We cannot ignore the fact that we also have some safety issues and we cannot ignore uh, the current instability in some regions of Cameroon. I'm going to ask you, um, are you planning at any stage of your career to return? <laughs> I, as a matter of fact, I'm already returning. Yeah, I would say that. And I would say that a lot of uh, groundwork has been done in the beginning. And when I talk about groundwork, I'm not talking about just talking. I'm talking about putting together infrastructure, uh, putting together uh, uh, both, uh, both, uh, both, both abroad and at home as well to prepare mm -hmm. for this. I'm talking about communications with people who are going to provide the services. And, and most importantly, I personally, uh, I recently got a grant, a research grant from the National Institute of Health, the US National Institute of Health. Um, uh, and I intern to use a significant amount of that grant to build a hospital in Cameroon. What word of advice do you have to give to the young Cameroonian boy who is, uh, I don't know, maybe um, in a not too pleasant situation in some far flung part of the country and who has dreams? I will tell them to work hard because there, there, is, there, there are no shortcuts to life. You need to, you need to put in your work. You need to work. There's not like, there's, there are no shortcuts. You have to work hard. You have to listen. And you have to seek for advice. It takes one person to change your life. You're one person away from your destiny. You need to work out, identify that person. And when destiny is going to meet preparation, you'll be surprised. It's just like what, it's, what I'm experiencing. I feel like it's, it's a, a, a perfect example of, of a situation where, you know, preparation meets an opportunity. And you grab it. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Basil J, for accepting to talk to CRTV News. Um, it's worth reminding our viewers that you have been listed in the highly selective and coveted America's Most Honored Doctors in 2021 for your outstanding work in gastroenterology, and that you um, have had uh, lots of uh, training in some of the best schools across um, the world, the UK and the US. And of course, that you are not stopping right here. Thank you so much uh, again, uh, CRTV News, for reaching out and hearing my story. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Njie. Uh, it was a pleasure.